Hello everyone, in today's video we will be discussing about diagnosis in endodontics and uh, today I will be discussing about uh, definition and various tools and techniques used in diagnosis in endodontics. Diagnosis is the act of using scientific knowledge to identify disease process and to distinguish one disease from another. Correct determination, discriminative estimation and logical appraisal found during examination is evidenced by distinctive signs, marks and symptoms. The procedures used in the diagnosis in endodontics are first of all we take the chief complaint from the patient, we take comprehensive medical and dental history, social review, extraoral and intraoral examinations that is uh, mouth in general and evaluation of teeth and any restorations if there are caries uh, restorations and other defects and periodontium soft tissues occlusion we need to evaluate all of these in radiographic examination of teeth and restoration if necessary and other other adjunctive aids and clinical examination before hands-on examination standard precaution must be taken to avoid the transmission of diseases now due to the coronavirus disease COVID-19 almost all the elective dental procedures are uh, deferred and if uh, extremely necessary these all the dental treatments are done on the universal precaution okay standard full set of PP is indicated for the time being and it involves examination of soft tissues and hard tissues and it is performed in clean dry and well illuminated mouth proper instruments uh, mouth meter explorer periodontal props and dental floss are necessary for the clinical examination and in intraoral and extraoral examination first we go intraorally extraorally and then intraorally okay and in extraoral examination we take symmetry of face scars in the cheeks lips or chin extraoral injuries tmz lymph nodes and in intraoral first we examine the soft tissues and then only we will move to hard tissues and the conventional methods of caries detection are visual changes we see the carious tooth is black spot and the tactile examination uh, that is done with explorer radiographs tooth separation dental floss and fiber optic trans illumination visual changes chalkiness or brown gray discoloration of pit and fissures or smooth surfaces and there will be frank cavitation if the lesion progresses further tactile examination for these uh, explorers and dental floss are used curved explorers is used to detect the occlusal pits and fissures and dental floss is used for interproximal carious lesion and a fraying of dental floss is sign of proximal caries okay a uh, small um, piece of dental floss is uh, taken and it is inserted in the interproximal area and it is moved it is taken out slowly and if it uh, frays that is the small threads particles come out that uh, indicates the proximal dental caries and tactile findings suggestive of caries include a softness at the base of pit and fissure there will be binding or catch of the explorer tip uh, there's the in the picture you can see diagnosing the proximal dental caries with the help of dental floss similarly smooth surface caries can be non-cavitated or cavitated in non-cavitated there are no signs of cavitation after visual or tactile examination and these are located in the area of plaque accumulation surface characteristic is matted not glossy when a tooth is dried and in cavitated visual breakdown of a tooth surface is seen an active cavity on a smooth surface has soft walls or floors pits and fissure caries u.s public health service has developed additional criteria for its diagnosis softening at the base of pit or fissure 
opacity surrounding the pitta fissure indicating undermining or demineralization of enamel softened enamel that may be flaked away by the explorer and then there are root surface caries which are well defined discolored area adjacent to gingival margin typically near the cz and this is softer than adjacent soft tissue and spread laterally around the cz active root surface lesion are well defined area showing yellowish or light surface discoloration and as shown in the picture these are covered by visible plaque presence of softening or leathery consistency and probing with moderate pressure an inactive or arrested root surface lesion these are well defined black or dark brown discoloration as shown in the picture and these are smooth and shiny and when probed with uh, moderate pressure these are hard these are inactive root surface lesion proximal surface caries this can be diagnosed radiographically by bitewing radiographs or visually through fiber optic transillumination a white chalky area in the marginal ridge may be evident as you can see in the figure here these are the proximal surface caries and in the radiograph they are in the cz region there is a radiolucency careful probing with explorer may defect, detect the cavitation which is defined as break in the surface or contour of enamel arrested caries these are observed clinically and these appear intact but they are discolored the change in color is due to trapped organic debris and metallic ions within the enamel this discolored remineralized lesion are intact and are highly resistant to subsequent caries and this need not be removed recurrent caries diagnosed whenever there is softness due to caries at a defective margin okay there is a restoration and its margin is defective for example when you restore with amalgam and the margin is not exactly 90 degree it is acute margin if you put that may fracture and when the tip of a periodontal prop can enter the defect without any resistance that is recurrent caries a restoration with a discolored margin or a small marginal ditch less than 0.5 mm or the size of the head of a prop is recorded as an early recurrent caries area or larger defect greater than 0.5 mm classified as an advanced recurrent caries area associated with a high level of colonization with cariogenic bacteria and as you can see the caries is removed this is a proximal caries lesion and you can easily notice that the teeth is teeth has been restored this is a first molar maxillary first molar and it is restored with composite resin and the mesial wall has been affected by recurrent caries and radiographs for endodontic diagnosis include IOPR by twin and dental panoramic or OPG and indications for the radiograph uh, previous periodontal or RCT root canal therapy history of pain or trauma and if there is deep or large restoration deep caries lesions if there is any swelling mobility fistula or sinus formation and there is unexplained sensitivity only in these indicated cases we are supposed to prescribe the radiographs and fiber optic trans illumination foti 40 the in the caries lesion there is lowered index of light trans illumination after drying the tooth a fiber optic probe can be placed in buccal or lingual embrasure beneath the contact area between the two adjacent teeth. When viewed through fiber optic light source, it appears as a darkened shadow. Uh, as you can see in the picture, all the areas of the dark, dark shadow as shown in the arrows. This include the occlusal and buccal surface caries. And the principle behind FOTI is demineralized areas of enamel or dentin scatter light more than sound areas or normal areas this detect the presence of caries and other recent tools used for detecting the caries are zero radiography digital radiographic methods computer aided radiographic method digital subtraction radiography digital imaging foti dyes 
electrical conductance measurements in the endoscopic filtered fluorescence method QLF quantitative laser fluorescence alternating current impedance spectroscopy technique assist and ultrasonic imaging optical coherence tomography but these all are on the recent development and these are not routinely used you need to know only the techniques these are present there but normally we use the simpler tools digital 40 fiber optic trans illumination it combines a 40i and a digital ccd camera includes uh, images captured by the camera are sent to the computer for analysis which produce digital images that can be viewed and advantages it is not non-invasive and instantaneous image projection okay unlike the conventional radiography there is no need of film development and it can detect incipient and recurrent caries very early but disadvantage is that it does not measure the depth of the lesion it is difficult to distinguish between deep fissure stain and dental caries similarly caries detector dyes are also present in the market uh, one is the procyon it is branded for enamel caries but have not been successful for clinical use rather useful for detection of dentinal caries and it is the composed of 0.5 percent basic fustine and propylene glycol and it stains the infected demineralized dentin selectively while the affected dentin remains unstained so we can use uh, hand excavators to excavate only the stained parts currently basic fustin is considered to be carcinogenic uh, hence it is replaced by one percent acid red dye in propylene glycol similarly another tool is quantitative laser fluorescence it is related to the endoscopic filtered fluorescence method recently it has been found that bacterial metabolites within caries produce fluorescence that can be enhanced by laser light here the tooth is illuminated with a broad beam of blue light 488 nanometer wavelength from an argon ion laser the fluorescence in enamel is seen in 540 nanometer wavelength demineralized enamel appears dark which can be recorded on a photographic film or by means of computer diagnodent is another recently developed commercial laser fluorescence by cabo company and it uses red laser light 665 nanometer wavelength via fiber optic probe to examine the tooth surface normal healthy tooth structure shows no fluorescence resulting in low reading in the display similarly when we examine the clinical examination of the restoration we can see the margins of the restoration blackish amalgam blues can be seen similarly in the radiograph we can see the proximal overhangs which will uh, cause periodontal problems later as we can see in this radiograph the overhang has caused the alveolar bone loss interproximal bone bone loss and there is secondary caries this uh, enamel margins are being fractured in this uh, class 2 amalgam restoration similarly marginal ditching you can see here marginal ditching in this amalgam restoration voids voids are the empty spaces in the restoration margin okay and recurrent caries you can see the areas of recurrent caries similarly marginal incompatibility the margins are not clear cut in improper proximal and occlusal contact this may be also uh, result in a restoration when the restoration may become too high or too low and other tooth color restoration same as amalgam there can be proximal overhangs improper contact recurrent caries or the condition that impairs cleaning should be checked and anterior tooth uh, especially there should not be any blackish discoloration aesthetics is the main thing to consider in anterior tooth if a tooth colored restoration has dark marginal staining or to the extent that it is aesthetically unpleasant to the patient it is considered effective 
and marginal staining that is dodged non carious may be corrected by small repair and it is can be also repaired by resurfacing and cast restorations if any aspect of the restoration is not satisfactory and is causing harm then it is cause it is considered defective cast restoration other adjunctive test for Diagnosis in endodontics are percussion test. Pain and percussion suggest the possible injury to the pedial membrane, periodontal membrane from palpal or periodontal inflammation. Either can be the cause. And we can do percussion test, biting test. If a patient complains of pain and chewing and there is no evidence of periapical inflammation, an incomplete tooth fracture can be the possible cause. Similarly, biting on a wood stick on these cases can elicit pain usually on the release of the biting pressure. Uh, in the picture, using of a tooth sleuth is uh, done. The patient is asked to bite on the tooth sleuth and when releasing the pressure, the patient feels the pain that, uh, that diagnoses uh, the vertical fracture of the tooth. Similarly, thermal test. Before any tooth is restored with a casting, pulp should be evaluated. A cotton applicator trip is sprayed, sprayed with a freezing agent or indoor ice or hot gutta porsa is applied directly to tooth. Pain lasting for 10 to 15 seconds after stimulation by heat or cold hyperemia. Okay, if uh, it lasts only to 10 to 15 seconds, it can be reversed by removal of the irritant. But if there is intense pain of longer duration, uh, that is irreversible pulpitis, so mm, that should be endodontically treated. Similarly, if there is no any response to the thermal test, there is a necrotic pulp and that should be treated endodontically. Electric pulp tester, it is placed on a tooth, a small current is delivered which causes a tingling sensation when the pulp is vital and no response when the tooth is non-vital. Okay, Electric pulp tester. It, uh, results of this should not be the sole basis of pulp diagnosis as in this false positive and false negatives can also occur um, and incompletely formed roots and in the history of recent trauma the electric pulp test uh, is not so reliable test similarly anesthesia test it is done when the patient cannot locate the pain and the thermal test is negative the patient is instructed to hold water first against the mandibular teeth and on the side and then by tilting the head to include the maxillary teeth. If a reaction occurs, an intraligamental injection may be given to anesthetize the soft speck tooth and hot water is then again applied to the area. If there is no reaction, the pulpitis tooth has been identified. Similarly, we have Curie's activity test, a lactobacillus colony test given by Hadley in 1933. The principle is the number of acidogenic and acidic bacteria in the patient's saliva. It is uh, done by the counting of number of colonies appear in the tomato peptonogar plates of uh, pH 5 after inoculation of the sample of saliva. And selective media is the rogosas media favoring the growth of acidic lactobacilli. Acidic pH having high amount of acetate salts and lower surface tension highly selective for growth of lactobacillus. Patients use the paraffin before breakfast. 5 to 10 ml of saliva is collected in the 3 ml. The following 3 minutes collected in the sterile container. It is taken for 2 minutes. Sample diluted to 1 is to 10. By pipetting 1 ml of the saliva sample into 9 ml of tube. And then it is diluted to 1 is to 100. And 0.4 ml of each dilution is spread on the surface of a gar. And it is incubated for 3 to 4 days. It's 37 degrees centigrade. And number of colonies that developed counted within the counter colony counter with bright light and large magnifying glass. If the number of organisms is less than 1000, degree of caries activity is none. Less than 10,000, that is slight degree, less than 1 lakh, that is moderate, and more than 10 lakhs or 1 million, the marked caries activity is suggested. Similarly, another is scholarly metric Snyder test. It is based on the rate of acid production when stimulated saliva is inoculated into a glucose and agar containing medium containing the color indicator bromokisol green. Colorimetric. Colorimetric means color indicator. Okay, bromocrisol. Similarly, as compared to that previous one, uh, saliva is collected before breakfast by chewing paraffin wax and it is a uh, tube of Schneider glucose agar is melted and then cooled at 50 degrees centigrade 
0.2 ml saliva is prepared in the tube and mixed. Agar is allowed to solidify and incubated at 36 degrees centigrade. Color change is observed after one day, two day, and three days. 24, 48, and 72 hours by comparison with an uninoculated tube against a white background. Okay, and if it turns yellow within 24 hours, then caries activity is marked. And after 24 hours, it is green, the test is continued. And if it is uh, yellow after 48 hours, there's a definite activity. And if it does not turn yellow even after 48 hours, it is carried up to 72 hours. And even after 72 hours, if it is green, it is inactive. Carry limited activity. Okay. A swap test. It is used in young and uncooperative patients. No need for salivary collection. Ular flora is sampled by swabbing the buccal surface of the teeth with cotton applicator. Incubated for 48 hours. And if the pH is uh, 4.1 or less, it is marked carries activity. 4.2 to 4.4 active. 4.5 to 4.6 slightly active. And over 4.6 carries inactive. And another clinical diagnostic tool for endodontics is palpation, extra oral palpation to detect the swollen or tender lymph nodes. And intraoral palpation and alveolar abscess in an advanced stage or other periapical passages may cause tenderness on palpation. Other defects like abrasion, erosion, attrition, effraction require intervention if they are symptomatic or close to the pulp. Localized intact hard white areas and tooth surfaces due to non hereditary hypocalcification of enamel that require corrections if they are in aesthetically significant areas. Fracture or crease lines, especially in elderly patients. Developmental anomalies like a dense indented examination and dentinogenesis imperfecta, etc., can be also present. And the picture shows a case of. That may be cervical abrasion in the severe form or that may be abfraction if it occurs due to the mechanical forces like toothbrush trauma that is abrasion and abfraction is due to the chewing forces okay in the C is a reason this is fracture of the tooth evaluation of periodont Periodontal health is critical to restorative treatment and long-term prognosis and it is uh, necessary to assess the periodontal health before undergoing any endodontic treatment. It is assessed to evaluate oral hygiene, supra or son gingival calculus, health and position of gingival tissues, bleeding and probing and presence of pockets and mobility. And occlusion also should be evaluated, static relationship of teeth in centric occlusion, determine um, overset and overbite and indicated when several restorations are planned or multiple teeth are missing if uh, multiple teeth are to be replaced or um, restored we need to consider the overall occlusion and that's for today and the references used um, in today's um, slides were uh, Stuart Evans Art and Science of Operative Dentistry, Clinical Operative Dentistry and Essentials of Public Health Dentistry by Soben Peter. If you have any queries, uh, please mention in the comment section below. You can discuss the problems and your any queries will be addressed. Thanks for watching. We will come up with another video very soon.